six typical school girls. As at that time, the internally displaced persons on a daily basis increased from 350,000 to 650,000 within the period, an increase of about 309%. Unfortunately, the slide cannot be seen by everybody, but if we look at it, you can see all the areas you see, the flashes, those are areas of influence of Boko Haram as at 2014, apart from their main concentration area, which is the northeastern part. You can see the ridge almost got even to the southwest. Northwest was not spared. North central was like the epicenter, in addition to the northeast. At the end of the year 2014, Boko Haram controlled more than 20 local governments in Bono, Adamawa, and Yobe states. If you, unfortunately, I'm sorry, the maps cannot be seen by everybody, but if we can see it, the area northeast of Nigeria that is covered by red, that was what the Boko Haram location was completely. There was no presence of military to ward off their activities as beyond areas that we see in blue. One, two, three, four, five, like six places. Those were the places that the Nigerian army was controlling as at 2014. Next slide. Now to the situation in 2015. Even in 2015, the attack into inland Nigeria continued. It witnessed more Boko Haram territorial gains also in the northeast. There were penetration attacks across Nigeria. Baga was attacked again in January. In fact, that was the one that led to the end of the then multinational joint task force because the headquarters was overrun and troops dislodged. It also led to the dislodgement of troops from the military barrack in Mongunu and all those areas were completely being ruled and overtaken by Boko Haram. But by July 2015, over 1,000 schools have been destroyed by Boko Haram activities and more than 400 closed due to insecurity within the Northeast. However, within the early part of 2015, the military made some gains, especially between mid January to March. Bama as a town, Gunigari, Kanama, Goneri, Gombi, Mobi, Mongono, and Baga were retaken, especially the military barracks and the towns. But I can say, as the person that was physically on ground then, yes, those big cities and barracks were retaken, but all around, within the local government areas, these people still have their freedom of action because it was difficult to, ab to abandon the towns and continue to pursue them. As we move forward, the towns will be retaken. So that actually restricted the capacity and capability of the military to continue and maintain the momentum. The coming of the present administration and appointment of Lebanon General Tuku Yusuf Gratai as the Chief of Army Staff in July 2015 however, change the tide for good. Operations were reinvigorated in the third quarter and concluding part of the year 2015. Change in the dynamics within the Northeast and across the country in terms of spheres of control and penetration of the terrorists were witnessed. Also, there was the establishment of the Military Command and Control Center on the directives of our amiable Mr. President. Also, the theater command headquarters was established here in Maiduguri. The theater, com the theater headquarters was established to coordinate the activities of all the formations that were involved in fighting the terrorists within the Northeast, at least to pr provide a common goal and a central point of command and control and reporting line through the Army headquarters 
to the strategic headquarters. Under the directives of His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari and the able leadership of Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Ratai, cooperation with our neighbors, especially those within the Lake Chad Basin, was enhanced. Multinational Joint Task Force was reinvigorated, re-established with its headquarters in, in Jamena Chad. May I mention and remind the, the, this August audience that Lebanon General Tuku Yusuf Gratai was the pioneer multinational joint task force commander. And I was privileged to have also worked as the commander of the force for some time. As of December 2015, a lot has been achieved by the military. Gedam in Yobe, Dikwa, Gamburu, Axis, Gamburu, Gala Axis, Madagali, and many other places were retaken from the Boko Haram terrorists. The terrorists at this time resorted to massive use of improvised explosive devices attack in desperation to counter security forces and reverse the trend to no avail. In fact, improvised explosive devices threats have remained an ongoing concern in the counterinsurgency effort. This takes me to the map again to explain. At the beginning, we saw how the whole of Northeast was in red. But as at the end of 2015, many people will now understand when the military, as well as the government of this country, claimed and confirmed that Boko Haram has been technically, technically degraded. One of their primary aim was to acquire territory within Nigeria and maybe some part of the neighboring states establish a caliphate and run their own government. As of, the, as of December 2015, that aspect has been defeated and their personnel degraded accordingly. You can see, as of December 2015, they were already pushed to near the fringes of our borders with our contiguous countries. Niger, Nigeria, Nigeria, Chad, Chad, Nigeria, Nigeria, Cameroon. And that also led credence to the establishment of the re-establishment of multinational joint task force and their own conduct of operation in conjunction with all the local operations of the states involved. So as of December 2015, we have their vestiges still roaming in Alagano Forest as well as parts of Sambisa. This takes me to 2016. The focus of the operations in the year 2016 was to consolidate on the gains of the previous year, dominate all liberated areas, and deny the terrorists freedom of action. It was also to build confidence of the population and free more hostages from previous Boko Haram terrorist enclaves. We are also to secure all internally displayed persons in their respective camps. A new figure was also induced in the leadership of men and management of resources to ensure maximum efficiency by our amiable Chief of Army staff. Also, more units were inducted into the theater of operations to restore public confidence. In the year 2016, also, about July, the Defense Headquarters launched Operation Safe Corridor. This is to encourage repentant fighters to surrender for subsequent rehabilitation. Over 2,000 fighters have so far surrendered on this program, and out of which about 300 have, come, have undergone a comprehensive and complete rehabilitation. They have all been equipped and returned to their respective communities through their respective state governments. Also, the year 2016 also witnessed the arrest of so many uh, Boko Haram leaders and the destruction of their splinter cells outside the enclave. Khalid al banawi as you can see on the screen, who was the group leader of a splinter group named Ansaru Terrorist Group, was arrested in Lokoja. And since then, that was the end of that splinter group 
that was supposed to be called